All right, hello and everyone, and welcome to the fourth session of Star Trek Dark Royal. I know we've been off for a while, but I think we're past all the scheduling problems, which means we'll, knock on wood, be able to adhere to the every other week schedule. Now, for those who need a reminder or just don't know, Dark Royal is a tabletop role-playing game using the Star Trek Adventures rule set. It is set aboard an alien vessel that is not part of Starfleet and thus plays by different rules. We are in the same quote-unquote canon as McCall's Nighthawk and Cerberus games. You can check out, uh, check those out and catch the VODs of Dark Royal on my YouTube and other podcast solutions. Uh, one little quick bit of shilling before I run the intro. I appreciate any and all forms of support, whether that's a follow, sub, donation, bits, patron, or even just chatting in chat. Just, you know, make sure to take care of yourself first before throwing money at me. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and run that intro. And welcome back. So, uh, with all of my STA games, I usually have the uh, game start with some form of a captain's log or a mission log. So, I believe today, Shizno, uh, Captain Dominus has that. So, if you would take it away. Captain's official report, Imperial date 00171406.m03. It's been roughly a week since our incident with the Zenkethi Raiders. I have gotten word back from the homeworld that the Zenkethi Empire has disavowed the Raiders and expressed their uh, sympathies for any issues they may have caused. In other words, the Zenkethi got their asses handed to them by a ship they marked as inferior. I think they're going to think twice before messing with any of our other Cornet ships. Which makes me happy. Other than that, we stopped at Cerberus Station for a brief bit to do a bit of personal changeover. I lost two from the engineering department, our chief engineer, Kea, and one Ensign Grack. Apparently, Kea took an offer to go back to the homeworld to work on, I believe, either finishing up a new design or doing the... What's the term? Space test for a new hull. I do wish her all the luck, and same with Ensign Grek. Hopefully now engineering won't smell that bad. Other than that, I'm looking forward to receiving our new engineer. He is apparently a Gorn. Oh, you know what, computer? Strike that last sentence. Apparently that spell's gonna stay in engineering. Strike that last sentence. Okay. Besides having a new engineer board the ship, I'll have a few meetings with the other staff members to see how everyone's progressing. Morale seems to be high after the last encounter with us and Kathy, so hopefully we can do some exploration without too many fistfights. Speaking of exploration, we've been given a task to monitor a Class Y planet. We've been getting some odd readings, according to our science officer. Hopefully she'll be able to shed more light on it the closer we get to it. End report. Alrighty. So I thought it would be good to have our first scene in main engineering with our newest character. Which, if Roll20 would stop derping out on me, it would transition properly. There it goes. Alright. So, uh, Dominus, uh, you are walking into main engineering where our newest character, uh, Lieutenant Commander Zazadar, 
is uh, doing something with a hyperspanner. You don't know what, but he's doing something. So, uh, Sunbei, if you would care to introduce your character. Zethadar is a Gorn, but not the beefy type. He's more lanky and lean. Think um, a panther, a cheetah versus a lion or a tiger, but reptilian. Um, he's in there kind of opening things up, looking at stuff, closing it back up, opening, banging, trying to get the feel for everything going on. All right. And in walks Captain Dominus doing his rounds of the ship. And Zazadar's head's probably deep inside one of these little openings. Unaware of the captain coming in. Chief, you have a moment. And he immediately hits his head on the opening of whatever was in there. Ah, ah Captain, I, for, for you, anytime. How do you find the ship? It's much cleaner than any Gorn vessel. I can tell you that. It's very nice. Have you seen the Jeffrey tubes? Apparently, the former uh, engineer had a uh, ensign named Grek that would leave meat in spots if he was doing a long shift. Ah, uh, that's the smell. Okay. I should be spending more time in the Jeffrey's tubes. Please don't leave meat in the Jeffrey's tubes. I don't take long on repairs, Captain. That's good. So, you're not from the Imperium. Do you think you can follow orders just fine? I followed the orders of the last captain. He was extremely unreliable. He lost their ship gambling on Cerebus. Well, I don't plan on losing this ship to anyone. And you have my respect, Captain. Good. I want you to do a full workup on every bit of this engine. I want to report by tomorrow at noon on my desk. So that should give you about 20 some odd hours. Aye, Captain. And the previous engineer left me some notes replace rocks in the ceiling in the bridge with scrap metal uh yes our chief of security our master at arms just all above his station if you would uh recycling is good for the environment so not a problem and then take a button off of koros bridge station it broadcasts Polarized armor plating? Uh, yes. Yeah, there'll be some modifications we'll have to do to the bridge. But for now, just focus on the engines. Everything I've read of your report and file actually has me impressed. I look forward to seeing how this ship operates under your care next. Thank you very much, Captain. This is a fine ship. I hope to be worthy. Treat everyone right, treat the engines right, and I'm sure everyone, and including the ship, will like you in return. They don't make them like they used to. And he's just going to pat the door frame he's standing at. Oh, there are some things here that Gorn ships would love to have. But I serve where I serve. Now I serve with you. Very well. Oh, and at... 700 p.m. tonight. Uh, you're invited to the captain's mess. I will be there, sir. Very well. Dismissed. And we're at ease and he'll leave. Uh, salute with a sp- hyperspanner. 
All right. As I frantically try to figure out what map to use as a captain's mess map. Ah, uh, <laughs> let's go to the science bay where a certain lieutenant is uh, currently engaged in scanning the planet. Or at least the planet you're approaching anyway. And Dominus, you are chiming at the door again, doing your rounds. Yes, sir. How is everything progressing? As good as it could be, sir. No readings that are no anomalies that I can see thus far. We'll probably get better readings as we get closer. He's just going to tilt his head as he's listening to her talk, and he's just slowly going to increase his overall size just to start towering over her. <laughs> her eyes are going to get big, and she's going to kind of twitch and be like, can I help you? Did, did I say something wrong? You're stammering. Do not fear me. You're on this ship. I told you before, you're safe here. It, then why grow? <laughs> because I wanted to test your resolve. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> He'll just go back to normal. Before <laughs> normal for him. Oh, that's right. I forgot to tell that to the Gorn. Yeah, I'll bring up a dinner. By the way, you're invited for dinner in the captain's mess tonight. All of us in your staff are. Yes, sir. I will. I will arrive, or I will be there. <laughs> it's not a formal uh, social event, so you can be relaxed. If you need any dietary requirements, please let the chef know. Yes, sir. I will send forward my. Uh, specifications should there should i probably well. so what can you tell me about this y-class planet we're heading towards um uh out of care can i go ahead and scan the planet and yeah you certainly can uh go ahead and give me a uh, a reason science uh difficulty of one and the ship will assist you with a sensor science Zaz, do you want to get the ship? That I will. It is 2d20, correct? Correct. And the ship ELH? I apologize. Sensor science. Ah, with focus, because we're scanning, right? Yep. Two successes, strong start. Yes. Uh, I don't have access to the ship. Should be under KMS Dark Royal. Under characters? I don't think I've been added. Uh, try now. There we go. Sensors, science. And I assume we'll take that the breaches off? Yeah, take the breaches off. We'll do. All right, and a crit from the ship. So, uh, Cross, here's that handout I was telling you about. Uh, should be uh, a class Y planet scans document. Uh, how many momentum was that generated? Three. Three. I'll keep track of it from now on. Uh, where do I find it? Uh, should be under handouts. Same page as your character sheets. And the handout should be at the top of that list. Ah, got it. Um, according to the scan, sir, this planet is inhospitable. We can't even get there on in an EVIS. But there seems to be a signal coming from a Starfleet signal coming from an active volcano in the northern hemisphere. It's 
potentially a mistake, but the code registers as the USS Ophian, and it was considered MIA in 2398 after no communication for about a year. Interesting. Um, uh, yes. Out of character, would Dominus know of Ember? I would say probably. Okay. And would he uh, know of her previous postings? I think it's fair to say yes. And is this one of them? It is indeed. Yeah, he's going to furl his brow a little bit and he's just going to look at you and he's like, The Ophion, you sure? As I said, it's potentially a mistake, but based on the reading, it looks to be the Ophion. He's just going to smile at you like, Good, you sound sure. Captain to bridge. And Kragath, you currently have the bridge. Yes, Captain. Set course for this Y class plant we've been heading towards. Make sure we're pushing the engines hot. I, yes, I sir. Should, I should remind you, Captain, uh, or I should say that the nearest insertion point for an away team is about a 30 minute hover trip away from the OVNA. The Dark Royal could start melting if we get any closer. So transporters might work in an emergency, but they're definitely not recommended. Well, then let's prepare the hover tank for a nice long stay. Uh, we could increase its hull plating, make it heavier. It'll be slower, but it may offset the corrosion. That's my guess. You work with our new engineer. Come up with a plan. We have uh, some time on our hands. She furrows her brow a little bit. And is like, yes, sir. I'll... I'll get to it. Good. As he were, and he's just gonna make his way towards the bridge. Alrighty. Just give me a moment to uh, clear up some tokens. Alright, Heb is not there. Kragith, you're in the big chair. Alright, there we go. And yeah, you walk on to your bridge, Dominus, where you find Kragith in your chair. But you expected oh, him to be in your chair, so that's not a big deal. Yeah, as and I walk up, I just kick the back of my chair, like, out. <laughs> uh, uh, as he kicks the chair, just lean forward for a second. Then get up. <laughs> it just rocks. Three second pause. Then I get up. Captain. Kragath. I do. I would appreciate you not kicking the chair after I have been injured so gravely in the last stint. I didn't expect you complain uh, about your injuries. No. Maybe you but suffered I do not more want, of a head trauma. I do not wish to visit the medical center anytime soon. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be fine. A little tap on the back of a metal chair shouldn't really hurt you. Would have but advised. I will. Con I'll consider your feelings for next time. Word of advice. Do not trust do not trust the horned one with a scalpel. She likes to stab people. It's a good thing I don't need a doctor to look after me. It's right about then that uh, he have walks in and says, I'm sorry, what are we talking about? Are we stabbing someone? Not yet. And uh he have takes her seat. By the way, you two are invited to the captain's mess tonight. What the mm. what will we what, what will we be having exactly? The last the uh, gah you had us try was, excuse me for saying so, sir. It was rather horrible. Well, this time it's not a formal occasion, so you can put in a request with the chef. Understood, sir. He's just going to look at both of them and like, So, Kragath, how's your yes. station after that whole incident? Is it, is it repaired to your liking? I, I look at the chair, 
I notice the seat belts are back. There is one mistake. And what would that be? I ripped the seat belt off. That's fair. If I had been strapped into this, I would have been dead. Well, hopefully we don't have to make a sudden stop anytime soon. Sudden stops are less dangerous than explosives. Than explosions, sir. We'll agree to disagree. <sighs> Alright. And on that note, we are going to cut down to the main shuttle bay where Cross and our newest Zaz are currently figuring out what to do with the dropship. So you all have come down to the shuttle bay where your hover tank is currently waiting. And uh, you've brought with you a rather large amount of equipment because you wanted to be prepared for whatever, whatever it is you decide to do uh, in terms of reinforcement. Starfleet, you say this planet is very hot. How hot? She wrinkles her nose a bit. It's probably too hot for us to be standing there for very long, to be quite honest. There is hot for Starfleet, and then there is hot for Gorn, and from what I've seen, the Cornet. For me, no more than 30 minutes in an Eva suit. For you, probably. <laughs> yes. Now, that is if your skin is as thick as they say. It is Which thick. is true. Okay. <laughs> now, what can we do for this? <laughs> this, this is nice. This hover tank. <laughs> It is a nice vehicle. Are you proposing that we strengthen the hull? It is what the captain meant, proposed, but are there any they, others? They, they have no shields. No. The cornets seem to be against shields. So the plating is like the rest of the, the main ship. I would believe so. Uh, out of oh. character, is it? It is. Is the plating? Okay. So, yes, it is. So, maybe with your science, I don't do science. I fix broken things and make other things stronger. The if the polarizer, is there a special frequency we could use to make better for the heat? You have a good point. Can you point me in the right direction? Or can I go ahead and roll? You can definitely go ahead and roll. Uh, let's do a... Let's call this a insight in science. Uh, you will have... Uh, you will have a focus here because you're using the computers. Right. And uh, the difficulty on this will be a two. And... Which you have rolled three successes, so another momentum for you. Yay. And assistance from Zaz? Uh, yeah, go ahead and give me an insight engineering on your end. Uh, small craft as a focus? Most definitely. Wow, you guys are really hitting it out of the park. I believe you're actually capped on momentum now. So, uh, you have several ideas that occur to you, but if you have one of your own, feel free. Uh, the ones that come to my mind are that, yeah, if you were to uh, basically overload or overclock the polarization of the hull, it would probably maybe double or triple your operational time. 
another thing you could do is uh, you could install a rudimentary shield system. The captain might complain, but it would probably work a hell of a lot better than the polarized hull. Uh, the other thing you might do is you might just install a really good AC unit. Hmm. <laughs> do you see this as a rescue mission or a recovery mission? Did you see any life signs? Uh, give me one second. According to motion sensors, there could be life down there, but it's not guaranteed. Wow, amazing. I would honestly be surprised if anybody still survived and is down there. Because, um, out of care, what's the carrying capacity of the hover tank? Uh, the hover tank can fit probably 10 people, but you'd be cramped in pretty tight. And so if we added more power source to continue to overclock the polarization that would take o away crew space, but if we brought minimum people, transporter... the portable transporter array we could use the transporters maybe to bring people if there are more than what we could fit inside the tank yes yes i believe that is definitely an option so let's see how much power we have to add to give us the maximum time from the insertion point on site and back to insertion point. We know 30 minutes to and from then everything else for recovery or for the search of the area and possible rescue. Correct. So how do we want to, how do we want to do this? Do it. We figured out possible. Do we need to do another role to make it happen? Yep. And that's what I was about right. to say. So uh, there's a few ways you guys can go about this. Um, probably the easiest, well, I say easiest, uh, is for Zazadar to do a control and an engineering. Uh, Karas can assist with a control and a science. And uh, Karas, you are working with the computers of the hover tank, so your computer's focus applies. Uh, Zazadar, let's take a gander at your focuses here. You still have small crafts, so that would apply, as would power distribution systems. Um, the difficulty on this, I'm going to spend a little bit of threat here. I'm going to make it a four, and let's stick with a four. Yeah, not going to. I'm not going to increase the complication range. So just a difficulty of four. Okay, so I'll do. Cautious engineering and buy a dice. But okay, I'll, first I'll get use momentum, then cautious engineering. Well, cautious engineering activates when you buy a dice. Okay. Oh, I thought you had to got it. Not a problem. Yeah, I mean, so, anytime you. Well, let me clarify that. It's only anytime you buy a die with momentum, and right. you do an engineering roll, then it automatically applies. Gotcha. All right. So since we are capped. Let's use two, so three, three dice of momentum. So it should be that. four and dice overall. Check. And you said insight? Uh, control and engineering. Mine was? Yours is control science. Man, you guys are rolling hot tonight. From the same D&D &D crew. Is it 1d20 for this one because it's a support? Uh, it assists, yes, you've got it correct. Man, 
So there's a grand total of six successes, which means you get two momentum back. So yeah, uh, between Zazdar and Karas, you know, working together as a well-oiled team, uh, even though the uh, Zazdar is new, uh, you are not only able to uh, basically overclock the polarization, but you also are able for, and I will say that this is a one-time thing, but it will extend for the life of the hover tank. Um, but, you know, just one during this adventure, if that makes any sense. Once during this adventure, you can push past the red line to the point where your resistance against a single attack is going to be doubled. Sounds like we're going to get attacked, folks. Yeah, you know, that's not obvious <laughs> at all. <laughs> Quick okay. save. And did we lose any carrying capacity? I would say inside? yes. You've maybe gotten that down to only eight people. So okay. you have lost a bad. little bit of room. Now, I do have a question. Um, the Eva suits, uh, mm -hmm. are, do we have an option to ex like to make them a bit better so those that go down have a better shot or a longer shot? Yeah, uh, I would say it would be a similar role. Uh, the difficulty on this would not be as high, though. It would only be a uh, difficulty of three. But if you succeed on this same sort of role... Uh, I will double or triple your operational time. Awesome. Do you guys want to do that? Or Zazdar? <laughs> yes. More more time on ground is very good. All right. Ship. The tank can't go inside the ship. So. Question for you, GM. I have an answer. As a changeling, mm -hmm. am I at risk of any of the planetary environment since, like, Silverblood's can live there, and I can, I can turn into something that could be more adaptive to that environment. I would say you would be the special case here. Um, everybody else is going to need an EV suit. <laughs> awesome. But yeah, uh, let's do a reverse this time. Let's have Kuros lead this one, and you're going to do a control science. Uh, again, you have a focus, and Zazdar, you are assisting with a control engineering. Now, this time, Zazadar, I don't think you have a focus. No, I don't think so. Plus, small craft, but not. Yeah. Very small craft with people? Nah, unfortunately not. They have motors. <laughs> Do you want some uh, dice, uh, some momentum there, Koss? Oh, yes. After that roll. <laughs> oh. So, how many would you like? Uh. Remember, it's uh, it's one momentum for one die and three momentum for two die. Uh, two, two, two. Two. Okay. So yeah, just go ahead and roll another two. Oh, I'm going to make this out there. Uh, Captain, stand in order. Don't need permission to ask for momentum. If you want to use it, just use it. All right. Okay, so oh, no. uh, that is only two successes overall. So unfortunately, uh, either because of lack of material or because the Cornet don't really care about EV suits that much, uh, you're not able to really do any modifications to them. Uh, but the good news is like you don't render them useless. You're just your modifications just aren't working. Maybe some overconfidence on our part from our previous success. I can't argue with that. <laughs> Thought we could do it. Uh, but now we can last longer with the tank. <laughs> do you plan on driving games? Oh. One day, perhaps. Now, Lieutenant, if I can, there's been a history between Gorn and Starfleet. It has not been good. The captain taking a chance on me. I'm taking a chance on you. We've worked good here. 
I hope to continue. She takes a breath and nods her head. I'm willing to give this a chance. It's things happen and hopefully this could make things much better. <laughs> he smiles that nice row of Komodo dragon shark teeth. Good. Not ominous at all. All right. So I'm going to throw this out as a player vote here. Would you rather have the uh, captain's mess before or after the away mission? The away mission uh, could be a mess. <laughs> oh, man. And if we get attacked, the captain could become a mess. <laughs> also true. Uh, is Soup back yet? Uh, I do not believe Soup is back yet. Yeah, he said 10, 15 minutes, so he's probably gone for another 10 some odd minutes. Okay. Um, well, we, if anyone wants to do anything with the captain, I do have something I want to do uh, with Yev. Okay, where do you want it? Uh, captain's quarters. Captain's quarters, all right. Just give me a moment, because I had had it prepped for uh, for the dinner. Uh, let's see. Yev, where's Yev? All right, so we will cut to your quarters. How much time has passed since he got on the bridge? Uh, would you say like them working on the tank? I would say up to your discretion. Uh, they're probably still working on it at this time. Okay, I'll say this is near the end of them almost being done, at least with the tank, not the suits. Okay, so there's a chime at your door. Come in. And in steps Yev, and she says, You wish to be speaking with me, sir. And he's going to hold up a data pad. It's going to have a picture of a Vorta. Apparently, there's a Vorta at Cerberus waiting for me. I am unsure whether to express condolences or offer to kill it for you. <sighs> the last time I saw this is actually the same Vorta I saw and blew up. So this is tactic approval for me to kill them? Well, apparently they're extending an olive branch towards me. The Dominion, under its new leadership, wishes to recall or at least meet with the 100. Last time the Dominion came to Cornet Space, I destroyed their vessel with impunity. I watched their hull become slag, and I made sure I sent that message of the recording back to their homeworld so they understand not to f fuck with me. Now, they want me to play nice and greet them. And the homeworld wants me to extend an olive branch to this Vorta. Apparently... They want him to be aboard this ship as a liaison. So, you're to prepare quarters for whenever we go back to Cerberus. And I want you to find the longest flight path we can take so he has to sit in that station for a good long while. Well, sir, it is a... Uh... Not really my area of expertise, this dilly-dallying, but uh, I can see that there is a strange amount of gravimetric anomalies between us and Cerberus Station. Should take probably better part of a year to get around. And she winks Excellent. at you. Excellent. I have no doubt in my mind that this voyage is going to get impatient and find a way on our ship at some point. Well, sir, if that happens, well, maybe we just bump into them a little too hard. <laughs> You know my service record, but you don't know the start date of it, the whole time I've been with the Imperium. That is more or less correct, yes. I'm one of the longest serving members. I'm not young. I'm not old. The joys of being a changer, I guess. My father and mother, those cornets that raised me, 
they didn't shy away from what I was, and they never persecuted or hounded me like the other quote and unquote solids that the other changelings. That was over 80 years. I've got to see the Empire expand and grow, and I joined relatively young in my solid life. I want to see the Cornet Empire continue to grow. And from everything I'm seeing, they're going in the right path. <sighs> Sorry, I'm I'm having a speech here. This Vorta, though, just pissed me right off. And it's having a good day, too. Well, perhaps we will have something on planet for you to shoot, then. Or punch. <sighs> Alright. Well, prepare a quarter just in case he does find his way to us. Hopefully he gets lost in some spatial anomaly out there. I think I have per perfect quarters for him. You remember our old uh, Gorn engineer. Or not the newest one, the old one. <laughs> Sounds perfect. Which, uh, by the way, the uh, doctor has said that that quarters is currently biohazard level 3. Let's, uh, not send in the cleaning crew. No, oh, I was going Let's to make... just adding more meat. <laughs> That's why you're my XO. All right. As you were, thank you for to an old, listening to an old man vent. Of course, sir. That's what I'm here for. And yeah, she steps on out. So again, uh, now that Soup is back, uh, did anyone have any scenes they'd like to accomplish? Either the Captain's Mess or scenes in general before we do an away mission. Zaz just wanted to send his dietary requirements to the chef. Okay. Ooh, I should I should have made a chef character. <laughs> oh. Swedish. Swedish chef. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's the only human. <laughs> um Let's see. Yeah, if anyone wants to do anything with the captain, open door before the mess. Other than that, um, yeah, I yeah, say uh, let's good. do the away mission. So, uh, before I describe the the whole part of you going down, uh, who would be going on this away mission? Oh, sorry. There is one yes. thing I would do. I would send off a transmission to Cerberus on a delay. When we get to the planet, the message sends out that we may have encountered the Ophion A. Okay, noted. Uh, and for, for the way mission, captain's going down. Figured as much. And then who else? Uh, probably Chorus, too, just in case it's okay. Starfleet. Chorus is going down. Kragith, I'm assuming, is coming as Kragith. Yes. And then uh, is Zazadar coming along? If the captain needs an engineer. Oh, I think uh, understanding how a, a multi-vector assault mode works is a, a good reason to have an engineer. I mean, to help secure and possibly aid the Federation ship mm -hmm. is a good reason to have our engineer with us. Ah. All right. I will be there, sir. And then my next question is, because uh, you will go down one momentum once we do this scene transition, do you want to buy any equipment with momentum? So if you want to bring transporter enhancers, you want to bring non-standard weaponry, you know, any anything like that. I do say transporter enhancers. Okay. Uh, yeah, or in our case for the uh, Cornet, it's a transport beacon because all of our stuff is like twice the size of Federation technology. Mm-hmm. Uh, just give me a moment. I'm trying to find how much that costs. Let's see. Well, it's um, two. Actually, it's only a one. Uh, if Ooh. you want a uh, pattern enhancer, it's only a opportunity cost of one. Um, actually, I'd say a power supply, a power pack, or like a something with a big burst of energy that we can use just in case uh, we need to charge something or turn something on. Gotcha. Uh, I will say that also will require a momentum cost of one. And we have a bunch of them powering up the 
overcharge overclocking the uh fate the what is it the polarized the armor polarized arm yes and this is an extra we can carry with us though oh portables yeah all righty now uh with that in mind, what happens is the we sort of see an exterior shot of you piling into all of you piling into the uh, hover tank with all of your equipment in tow, and the Dark Royal sort of exits warp uh, quite a not a distance away but fairly close to the Class Y planet. And as far as Class Ys go, uh, it looks fairly standard from space. It's kind of got that uh, miasma-like yellowish hue to it as there's also just ash being spewed in the air. For, even from space, you can see these massive volcanoes uh, that are just sort of polluting the atmosphere. And what happens is the Dark Royal flies in just almost to the point where it hit the atmosphere, and coming out of the forward uh, section of the ship is the hover tank. And the hover tank uh, begins falling down through the atmosphere, and it's a fairly bumpy ride. Um... And as you are falling, I would like everyone to roll me a fitness and command, please. And this is a difficulty of one. So I do want to say Dominus is piloting the tank. Okay. And I would say if you have anything like composure here, that would apply as a focus. Mm, nope. But I do have a small craft as a focus. Uh, that will not ah. help you here, unfortunately. Okay. All right, so Dominus gets some momentum. Uh. Okay, so in a strange oh. turn of events, or maybe With not a so fitness and a three command, <laughs> I still fail it. Um, My luck is on fire today. Zaz, you should roll one more dice, I believe. Yeah, Zaz, it's uh, one more dice. Nope. And whatever he rolls, you get his momentum, more or less. <laughs> anyway, so as that's being resolved, so again, it's a bumpy ride down to the surface. All right, so you're at two momentum. Uh, it's a bumpy ride down to the surface. And all of you are like, eh, this is a little queasy. Kragith, on the other hand, you lose your lunch. And I'm going to spend some threat. You lose your lunch onto the captain. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, he's a changeling. He, he can just get rid of it. But... Uh... Uh, when this happens, you you definitely see I am looking not so great. Master at arms, the captain's mess was where we we're supposed to eat, not the mess on the captain. You may take a momentum for that. <laughs> I am making a command order that no one mentions this incident ever again. I don't think I'd mention it for my own... Now, Zaz doesn't know you're a changeling yet, does he? <laughs> Not yet. And I don't mention I I just go, we're, we're not mentioning this. Let me get us down to the ground first. Why did, why did I have the shellfish? Just hold it in there, master at arms. You should have let it ferment a little bit. There's there's going to be nothing left to hold in, Captain. Let's just leave it at that. Chorus, I'm proud of you. That's all he says. He just focuses back <laughs> on the controls. <laughs> Thank and you, the... sir. Yeah, <laughs> While I'm holding on to my seatbelts. <laughs> that's what our moves away from the, from Korath. <laughs> So I think we blame this on the fact that Kragith had something bad to eat and he's recovering fish. from surgery. Yeah, I mean, like read side effects of a concussion. Mm -hmm. And having, almost having his organs blown out. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> Twice. Alright, so the good news is that the worst of it is over, at least for Kragith, and you all eventually do land on the planet, or... Let's make a roll of it, because I, I see you have some momentum there, and I want to get rid of that momentum. So, Dominus, <laughs> if you could roll me a, a control and a con, and whoever would care to roll for the hover tank, uh, the hover tank should be a uh, engines and con. 
Yeah, this is as I don't have access. There it is. I don't have access. Uh, difficulty. Oh one? yeah, difficulty. Difficulty. Let's make it a two. Okay. Well, I'm just I'm going to do a straight roll and see what happens. Alrighty. Yeah. Oh Woo! dear. <laughs> you oh, said dear. engines con. It doesn't sure. matter because he didn't roll any successes, unfortunately. Not a problem. So, Dominus, do you want to determine it, determination that, or are you going to keep it? <laughs> oh, I trust this tank taking a hit. Okay. I've been in plenty of these when they hit the ground. So, what <laughs> happens is, is as lady. you hit the ground, uh, all of you are thrown about the cabin violently. Even if you are in a seated, like a seat belted chair, I need everyone to take three straight. Well, let's 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 actually roll challenge dice for this. This is going to be three challenge dice worth of damage. So all of you are going to take three stress damage as you are thrown about. And my the- resistance cancels that. Oh well, lucky you. Everybody else though. Uh, can I attempt to stabilize myself to reduce the damage? Uh, I would say if you could tell me how you're doing it, maybe. Uh, what I am doing is I'm doing the good old adage of being in a doorway and having both arms on the sides of the door with my feet spread out, basically clawing into it. Hmm. I'll allow you to do a fitness and con at a difficulty of two. But if you fail, I I am going to have you take additional damage. Can I use survival as a focus? You can indeed, yes. Also have athletics, so. Huh. Only one success, so you didn't completely fail, but what I would say is you take an extra point of stress uh, as okay. you uh, you do steal yourself and prevent the worst of it, but uh, you probably would have done better in a chair. But yeah, uh, as the <laughs> hover tank sort of comes to a stop and then the uh, the hover part of it whirls up and lifts the hover tank up off of the surface. Uh, you look out the window and what you see is a molten landscape uh, full of magma or is it lava? Whichever it is. Uh, flowing lava. from volcanoes in the distance. Uh, the sulfur-like atmosphere is already eating away at the hull. And in fact, Zazadar and Koras, as you sort of look at your modifications, uh, that hit probably didn't help things, but you still have plenty of time uh the other thing you would note is that between you and here you're gonna have to cross one of the larger lava flows or sorry between here and the ophion a you would have to cross one of the lava flows i'm just gonna turn around and look at everyone and i was like sorry for the rough landing chief did you happen to adjust the sensors and the uh retrograde thrusters for the increased weight of the tank when you did your modifications the equipment that we added was well within the lift capabilities of the hover tank. Nothing outside of spec was added. The hover tank that normally doesn't have a rail gun. This one does. That is not that was not added. We used the previous chief's baseline. Mm. Did the previous gone. chief put explosives beneath my chair? Why did you Bear stand up? Very well. Let's make uh, some decent time on this. Let's go. And uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna gun it. Okay. So the uh, hover tank begins skimming across the surface. And uh, I would like you to roll me a, let's call this a control and a con. At a difficulty of two. And the tank? The tank will assist you with an engine's con. No. No double zeros, please. Yeah. No, you got one success. That's something. All right. So what I'm going to say is that something is going on with the, uh, the thrusters, or at least the main engine, because... Uh, when you start to drift off to the right, you overcorrect and you sort of do this zigzaggy motion. And in the process, you clip uh, one of the lava plumes or some of the uh, sulfuric uh, hot spring, as it were. 
And I'm going to say that the tank is going to suffer uh, one damage to its shields, which is polarized hull, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, but the good news is you are making good time, even with all of this going on. And eventually you arrive on this map. Now, what this looks like is it is a place where the lava flows uh, come together. They seem to branch out into like four or five splinters. And there appears to be a solid, or what looks to be solid, uh, mass of land that goes between uh, the almost two pillars of rock, one of which you are currently on. But between you and the other side is what appears to be a massive creature made out of rock and magma itself. Now, it doesn't seem to really care that you're there at the moment, but it is large enough, and you are picking it up on sensors, even visually, that uh, this is this is a problem. Hmm. This must be that life form. It only gets better and better, doesn't it? This reads the same life form as a human? It just reads as a life form. <laughs> or other Starfleet? Oh my. Okay. Right. Well, we can shoot it, but I don't think that's something we really want to do. At least in the tank. The other option is we can paint it and then have the royal blow it out from orbit. Or crazy idea. We jump the flow. I'm also so, open to other ideas. How's the heat on the vehicle? I would say that at the moment it's coping, but if you jump the flow, uh, there's going to be some tasks involved to keep the thing cool. Sir, our railgun is still usable. Yes. I don't know what that is, though. And if the railgun doesn't do much to it, it's going to do a lot to us. And the the drifting that the hover tank is doing because of the landing is, I assume that would add difficulty until repaired? Yes. We also have, uh, we can push past the red, right? You can. And I would okay. say if you want to repurpose that to do a sick jump, you can do a sick jump. Y'all want to use that to do a sick jump? <laughs> do you or think our luck's going to hold out? <clears throat> or we could repair the damage from the landing that was clearly my fault for not accounting for the railgun before we do the jump <laughs> and keep the whole plating. Not well, so, so the the sick jump, I believe, would be using the resistance bonus we got for one attack, or we could repurpose it uh, to do the jump. Basically, it would mean that you would not have to worry about the heat of jumping over active uh, lava flows. Um, we would basically just nullify that entire engineering check, uh, which it would have been a difficulty, or it still could be a difficulty three or four check. Um, but uh, if you want to just you know, take some time and repair. Just keep in mind there is sort of a, a ticking time clock of sorts of how long you can be here. Plus, you know, you don't well, know what the creature's going to do. While we're deciding what we're going to do, of course, can you scan that creature? I'm sure Starfleet would love to see what her life forms would be on a Y-class planetoid. Absolutely. Yeah, cross. If you want to give me a reason science, and the hover tank will assist with a sensor science. This is how we get momentum. I have faith in you guys. With the focus. Mm -hmm. All right, one success. With one oh, success, no. uh, I will say. Is waning. Let's see. With one success, I will say that you note that it has rather vicious-looking claws and teeth that you really, really don't want to find out if they're strong enough to pierce the hull of the tank. 
Oh, she also a it's a silicon-based life form. Ooh. I think our goal is to not get bitten <laughs> by that thing. Not to antagonize it. Agreed. Well, I don't think a railgun on his bell tank is going to hurt it, but a railgun shot from the Dark Oil should definitely decimate it. But what do, what do you all suggest? If the ship shoots, we are far away from it when it does. Splash from the lava would not be advised if it hit the ship. That is true. Master at Arms? I can shoot it, correct? Well, I'm looking for opinions right now. <laughs> My opinion is to, if we do not take the other plan, I shoot it. And you, Miss Chorus? I vote we do not engage it in this vehicle. Um... If we are able to go around it, or if we must use the Dark Royal to engage it, and then uh, as a distraction, and then move around. Very well. Prepare the hover tank for the jump. Let's find a good spot to see if we can ramp ourselves off of and gain some altitude. Wait a second. Isn't this also a shuttle? Can't this leave orbit? I was waiting to see if anybody asked me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Captain, you say this out loud, and you're almost like, oh, duh. You check your thrusters. Apparently, that crash that you did, you don't have enough to get back up to space. Do we have but enough can we fly for... Uh... Oh. Do we have enough can for... We fly? Uh... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can, can we fly high enough, though? Uh, I would say that you still are going to have to jump off of something uh, if you wanted to make this jump. I'm thinking something over here. Because if we can get to this other part of the map here, there is a bit of a bridge that we could potentially go off of. So going down here. Yeah. And then jumping here. And then coming up here. Yep. Okay. Well, yeah, so uh... my question is, uh, is Dominus still going to be piloting here? Does anyone else have small craft um, and con training? I have received some... To the level of 10 to the third power in the Gorn rating system. <laughs> oh, this is out of character. Uh, I got a 13 uh, for control con or daring con. Um, I'm a 10 and a 3 for control and a 9 and a 3 for daring. And this okay. is going to be a daring con check. Okay, so I'd be hired by one. Uh, do you have a focus at all, though, for small crafts? Small craft. Okay, so he could assist, mm -hmm. and then he'll have a focus too. And then would the craft be assisting as well? Uh, yeah, the uh, craft would be assisting with an engine's con. Okay. And the difficulty on this, at least uh, this first jump, so the first jump is here to here. So right across the main flow. That yeah. is going to be a difficulty of four. Okay. Is that the one you want to burn the the ship's upgrade? Uh, that resistant bonus, yeah. Because uh, if we spend time repairing the engines, we're going to be losing time that we can stay on the planet. Right here. Okay, so yeah. Uh, Dominus is going to pull the hover tank around 
and line up, and he's just going to look at everyone like, I hope your wills are in order. And uh, he's going to gun it. Um, I'm going to... Do I have to give you momentum, or can I opt to give you threat instead? You can always opt to give me threat in lieu of momentum. See, I'm worried if, see, his tone right there just said, if I give him threat, another creature is going to show up. That's how I'm interpreting his tone. <laughs> just a very Gorn-like smile I can picture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to use the three momentum to get two additional dice. Okay. Try not to delete the hover tank. Um, okay. And before you roll, I am going to use some threat here. The complication range is an 18 to 20. Okay. That's going to hurt. <laughs> um, and then all my talents come into play. Okay. Here's my roll. Okay. Hey. Four successes Four. with a complication. Oh, that's a complication. Damn. And I need one from the ship as well. That was engines. And con. Okay. So that's a total of five successes, uh, which means you get one momentum. However, there is a complication on the field. Would you like to give me threat or would you like to take the complication? I'm always a fan of complications, especially evil ones. Um, I have a suggestion. I will take suggestions. The landing cracks the window. That was a little bit more evil than I was thinking, but sure. (laughs) Players will always be more evil. All right. So, uh, Dominus, you gun the hover tank and more or less see it into the air, soaring above the lava flow. And for the briefest of moment, it almost looks like you're flying through the air. And then you come, not crashing, but with a very solid thud, you land on the other side. And as you do, I want you to uh, mark on the hover tank that you have suffered one structure breach. And that structure breach is that the window, as Shizno has suggested, the window has cracked. That's the window way in the back that goes to nothing no unfortunately it's the front (laughs) one okay Uh, yeah the players come up with more evil ideas sometimes well the best part is is because it's a structure uh, i'm trying to pull up the chart here but uh since it is considered a structure breach uh and you are a scale to craft uh you are considered to have a damaged structure which uh, fun fact, it means that in order to repair the ship, the complication range has gone up by two, and it also reduces your resistance by one. Oh, man. <laughs> Who made that suggestion, guys? Gosh. <laughs> <clears throat> well, then. <laughs> I was going to say it knocked whatever thruster was out of a line knocked it back in line yeah i'll say that much it's not drifting to the right anymore (laughs) there you go yay small (laughs) blessings yeah uh, we'll zip on past that creature now (laughs) i'm just looking at that crack i was like "Uh, great yeah i have to take that rail gun into account even more now no don't dwell on it let's focus on the mission at hand right now the flight parameters of the tank are all off. At least I don't have to report to Starfleet that we decimated a creature. <laughs> or landed in the wa- lava. Well, there wouldn't be a report then. <laughs> a very short one. Right. Dominus is going to chuckle sloth softly. All right, I'm going to roll something for the magma creature. Uh, I'll spend threat to give it an additional die. Ooh, let me check its stats here. Uh, 
no. Okay. Only has the one success. So the creature does, uh, at the sound of you approaching on the other side, it does sort of swivel its uh, large, almost a uh, Tarask like head. Uh, it kind of looks in your direction. And my question is, do you continue moving or do you come to a stop? I'm going to quickly raise the uh, Dark Royal. Mm -hmm. have, do you have sensor lock on us? It is a little difficult, but yes, I have approximate signal lock on you. He's just going to send up some coordinates. He's like, target the railgun here and fire. And it's a uh, it's good distance away from the creature, but enough that an impact should, you know, hopefully grab its attention. Right, right, right. Uh, let's see. If Hiev is firing... Yeah, let's have Hiev fire. So if someone wants to pull up her sheet... Uh, Karas, she can you be... had great luck with her last time. You roll her. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, Karas, I need Hiev to give me a control and a security. The difficulty on this is a three. And I am going to spend a little bit of thread here to create the complication... That if you miss, a, as in you do not succeed, you will either hit the creature full on, or there is the possibility you will hit the hover tank. Oh! <laughs> do I have <laughs> done, 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 done. You do have uh, can we, yes. Can we give Hiev a value? Uh, yes, this yes. is technically activating her. You can give her a value. I big never problems miss. require big solutions? Oh, yes. I never miss. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'll, I'll say use the momentum to get a third dice there. <laughs> okay. Uh, that means I have to go back. Um, it was... Control security. It... Hopefully she has a good score. Uh, is the ship assisting? Uh, yes, the Dark Royal is going to assist you with a weapons and security. Uh, and Kragath, do you want to roll that? Dark Royal, weapons, security, okay. All right, we have two successes on the board. What was the complication range increase? Uh, the complication range was not increased. It was simply a complication. Oh, okay, okay, good. So, ship always has focus. Yep. <laughs> my bad luck has not ended so my god um okay okay uh Hiev could use her determination to oh no it's, it's the ship yeah it's the ship that has the complication and the Ooh. only way to i don't think there's any way to get rid of that complication could we give you two threat to get rid of it no because i'm evil so here's what's gonna yeah. happen <laughs> Uh, I'm going to roll a D100. Actually, no, I'm going to make one of you roll the D100. Oh, one to I 50. Will it. I will roll it. All right. Yes, <laughs> God. We'll roll it. All right, yeah, Sue. We'll Sue, one to 50, you hit the creature. 51 to 100, you hit the hover tank. Watch as I roll 100. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kuros, I would like yeah. you to roll me the damage on the railgun, please. Oh I my god. I am glorious okay. tonight. Not only have in my earlier game today rolled n no less than two critical fails on literally <laughs> a 0.1% chance, but I did this. <laughs> but I did this. <laughs> Don't buy you know, lottery tickets because they would take money out of your account. <laughs> <laughs> they already they already would be. This is the captain's mess. You're all his mess. <laughs> Look, I blame the captain. You ordered this shot from the ship. Yeah. I, I blame the targeting sensor on the ship. Oh <laughs> no, you gave you gave the order. It's on you. It doesn't matter who made the targeting <laughs> sensor. All right, yeah, Karas. Time to get All right. I need five everything. challenge dice, please. Five challenge dice? Five challenge dice. Please roll all zeros. Just nothing but zeros. Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to spend my very last threat. Keyword there. <gasps> very last threat. I need you to reroll those four zeros. Oh, oh my god. Can, can we offset that with some more momentum? No! Oh, no. Okay. Oh, it's only 
Uh, oh, no, does, Durango has a vicious, though. It does have vicious, so that's six damage. Ooh. You had ah. four resistance, but it's reduced by one, so it's only mm-hmm. three damage to the tank. So narratively, what happens is uh, there is a almost like a crack of thunder that seems to permeate the landscape as a ball of flaming debris comes screaming down through the atmosphere. And for a moment, you think, OK, this is this is going to hit somewhere away or, hey, it's going to hit the creature. But then you realize with horror that the projectile is almost on a beeline for you and you have just enough time to boost the. Uh, polarity of the hull when it slams into you dealing the three damage. So I think you're at one shield right now. Captain. Correct. Captain. (sighs) I will add that to the list, sir. (laughs) (laughs) And if that wasn't bad enough, I now have to roll for the creature again. I don't have threat here, but uh, let's see what it rolls. All right, it doesn't uh, care. It, it rolled a complication. It doesn't care. <laughs> oh, thank God. Can the complication my, my be it runs away? <laughs> um, the complication like is, is, yes, it does decide to move elsewhere. So it just sort of picks itself up and rumbles off away from you. So my bad luck has radiated out from me into the DM now. Mm-hmm. Status report of the ship. How's the shuttle? Have disable weapons, please. You just shot us. Sorry, sorry, it was practice for Vorta. Tell him to meet me in the ring when I get back. I'm sure she will. Okay. Status of the hull, everyone? Is everyone fine? Do we have a hull breach? We... The cracked window didn't get to where it appears, but our... Hull plating is very low. Well, let's try and restore some of what we can. Can we do the restore shield slash plating action? You certainly may. Ah. Would that just get us back up to the regular, not our super bonus? Yeah, that would that would get you to your regular. Uh, so regenerate shields would be a... Uh, what is this? A control engineering... At a difficulty of one, and the ship will assist with a structure engineering. Now, I don't think this is affected by your structure breach. Let me reroll. Uh, yeah, so it is not affected, so it is just a difficulty of one, and you gain two points of shield uh, by succeeding on this task. Now, it also does require a power thing, so you would lose a point of power. Okay. And then we can just take the restore power action. Mm-hmm. All right. So if someone wants to grab uh, structure engineering for the uh, hover tank. I'll get the ship. E. All right. You get a momentum. And yeah, you immediately restore two of your shields. Uh, if I remember correctly, if we spend a momentum, we can get another restore point. Uh, another two, actually. Uh, I'll just cap us out at four. Okay. Or no, sorry, uh, five shields then, right? Yeah, yeah it would be five shields, four. and you're at three out of four power. Yeah, I was trying to work my math right. But yeah, uh, good news. Uh, with uh, Zazadar doing his best, he's able to restore the polarized hull to its maximum shield strength or polarized strength, I should say. Okay. Let's hope we have no more issues. And he's just going to start driving the tank towards the Ophion. Alrighty. Alright, we've been going for about an hour and 20 minutes, so let's take our 10 minute (coughs) break here. So, stream, we'll be back in 10 minutes. See you soon.
right, and welcome back, everyone, to the second half of Dark Royal Episode 4, uh, where we last left off our intrepid fellows. They had just gotten through a harrowing experience where, in avoiding a magma creature, they ended up railgunning themselves, which is a fairly impressive feat in and of itself. Uh, but the good news, at least for them, is that it is smooth sailing from that location to where the Ophion A uh, has come to rest. Now, the Ophion A is a Prometheus prototype. Uh, it was the first prototype in what would eventually become the Cerberus class, for those familiar with Star Trek Online. Uh, if you're not familiar with Star Trek Online, imagine a more streamlined hull where the differences between the saucer and the secondary hull is almost removed. So it's almost like a, uh, what's the shape? A trapezoid, I think? Yeah, I think it's a trapezoid. Where it just almost looks like one solid piece with four streamlined nacelles, uh, two on the top, two on the bottom, that come off at a higher, it, actually no, a lower angle than it would on a normal Prometheus class. Now... As you all come into view of the Ophion A uh, in the hover tank, what you notice are two very important things. The first is that for all its time on this planet, because it's been here for almost a decade, for all the time it's been here, it looks immaculate, like it just came out of shipyard. Second thing you notice is that there are swirling lights all around the hull, and at first, you might mistake them like, oh, they're just embers coming up from the lava. Um, they appear to be just almost like will-o'-wisps uh, that are sort of circling the hull. And they're not really doing anything with, like, rhyme or reason, so their movements are erratic. But they are circling the hull nonetheless. And that is what you see out of the window of your hover tank. Lieutenant Koros, can you get a scan on those? Lights. Absolutely. All right, Karas, I think you know what you're doing by now. Another reason science, if you would be so kind. And the ship will assist you with a sensor's science. You want to do the ship, Karas? <laughs> uh, what was it? Sensor science? Sensor science, which you got the uh, two successes on Karas. Very nice. So we'll get I, least... I got the ship for you. Okay. We'll get at least the one momentum. Okay, so just the one momentum. So, uh, Kuros, you actually get a ping back from the Ophion A's computer. Would you like to... Uh, let me put it this way. Would you like to interface with it, or do you simply just want to confirm that you can pull data from it? Um, I would, I would like to confirm that I can pull data from it and get the captain's permission to interface, if possible. Go ahead. You got permission. All right. All right. So this time, I want you to roll me a control and a science. Actually, let's do a control and security, because this is you interfacing with the computer, trying to pull logs, sensitive logs. All right. Um, I don't think you have a focus here, unfortunately. No computers? Oh, no. Yeah, you do have computers. Duh. Uh, computers will <laughs> apply okay. here. Um, the battle tank will assist you with a computers and security, but with zero successes, uh, Cross, I'm going to give you the chance to succeed at cost, but I'm going to take some threat for it. <sighs> Do it. <laughs> Do it. All right. All right. So Cross, I'm going to, because I'm picking on you apparently. I'm going to give you access to another handout. Uh, this one is the Ophion A logs, and you get access to those three entries. All right. While this is going on, I'm just sending a message uh, up to Yev, um, just to identify our position mm -hmm. and to stay parallel to it. Okay. Just in case. Captain, Captain, do you want us to set up the transporter beacon and then I can begin repairs? First, I would like to get aboard that ship. If we can get in through the shuttle bay or the cargo, 
we can then hopefully pressurize a location where we can fix this. And he's just going to point to that crack. And whatever is going on with the uh, lift off thrusters. Chorus um. is going through the logs and like just going back and forth between the, the last entry and the, the last bit. And uh, she's getting paler as she goes through it. And, and um, she said, I, I don't think we should stay. Why? Uh, to be clear, or from what I can tell, they, the, the crew was dead. Uh, and um, some, it sounds like something has turned them into uh, beings of sorts. Like they, they've come back to life. I, I think the humans refer to this as zombies. I've heard tales of uh, creatures or like their horror stories. Well, it's been a decade. Hopefully, they've been decomposed. Man, I don't know if it works like that. Mm. I can run a scan of the area. Yes, if you can, try to also see if we can get into their ship through a cargo bay or a shuttle bay. Yes, sir. All right, so Cross, uh, if you would give me an insight science this time, difficulty of one. Because it's sensors? Uh, yeah, because you're interpreting the sensor ratings you have already taken. All right, two successes, which means you get one more momentum. Yeah, uh, as fortune might have it, uh, one of the lateral cargo holds, the door is open. Uh, Master at Arms? Hmm. <laughs> You're going to be very busy, I think, especially if what our science officer says is true. Get prepared, everyone in EVA suits. Make sure you're well armed. If we see any movement, if it is, as you say, a... What, what is the word? Zombie? Zombie undead. You know, if they've been a reanimated... Don't shoot to stun, shoot to kill. I, I give the captain that? a slightly puzzled look. There is such a thing as not shooting to kill. My disruptor only has one setting, sir. <laughs> Have you been using deal disruptors, both of you? Yes. Oh, okay, yes. We were given some fancy non-lethal toys by Starfleet. Unnecessary. Yeah. I will they probably fail up. more than the old models. Anyways, let's suit up and get ready to breach. Karas, how much access do you have to that ship? Sir, before we go in, mm -hmm. can we s scan what those lights are? Oh, right. I knew I was forgetting to tell you something. Uh, so those lights, uh, they are uh, seemingly made out of some form of uh, Tetrion energy. And they appear to be uh, either on a cycle or that there's some sort of uh, pattern to them because they do ebb and flow at a predictable rate. And are they doing anything to the hull? Eh, they're just circling it. I was thinking they might be repairing the hull because it looks immaculate compared to the damage we have just sitting here. Well, we'll find out when we get on inside. Kuros, how much access do you have to the ship? How much access do I have to the ship? 
Uh, from here, not so much. But once you get inside, you could attempt again to get into the computer system. All righty. All right. Okay. Can I have Kragath go with me? Well, I'm oh, assuming all that all of you are going to go aboard. Oh, okay. and then, yeah. So we we sort of see a see, see a scene where the hover tank sort of uh, hovers on up to the side of the Ophion A, and using the best it can of its jets, sort of wobbles up into the air and enters into the cargo bay on the lateral side. And uh, as you touch down, uh, almost as if reacting to your presence, the cargo bay lights up, and the force field uh, does. Uh, Go activate behind you, and an atmosphere, a Class M atmosphere, begins pressurizing. And after a moment, there is a noticeable chime as the Ophion's computer reports over its loudspeakers. Uh, welcome to the Ophion A. Please enjoy your stay. And yes, Kragath does lose his lunch again. <laughs> in the EVA I didn't even roll for that one. <laughs> I spent threat. There you go. I've used my threat. We know okay. what was going to happen. Just mask opens up for a brief moment as lunch comes out, closes back up. Um. For, so for the shuttle bay, mm -hmm. typically they, I, I'm just imagining there is a doorway on one side. Yeah, I guess it would help if I described it, wouldn't it? So if you will imagine a standard sort of uh, Enterprise D shuttle bay, but mostly designed for cargo. So instead of uh, shuttles in this space, in this wide open area, uh, there are just crate upon crate upon crate. And the, uh, the sort of the second story or the second floor that overlooks all of this uh, is a control booth. Okay. Now, there are uh, uh, several doors out of here, but the main one probably leads deeper into the ship. Is there a spot in the cargo bay where I can position the battle tank uh, so that it has a wide covering area of the um, cargo bay? I would say you could. You would just knock over some crates in the process. That's perfectly fine. Okay. So yeah, you position um, yourself so that it has a uh, wide shot range across the entire cargo bay. And where would you like to go from here? Well, I want to rig up the computer because uh, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, it could have automated turret mode. It's a tank after all. Mm -hmm. um, anything that's not us, it's going to shoot at. Okay. Interesting. And I'm I'm going to give each of us a band to keep on that identifies us as safe targets or safe assets okay and i'll give you two momentum to make that advantage or okay. to make that a thing and it has been so noted yay hooray for warlock uh warlike culture <laughs> <laughs> master at arms your badge has some thing on it you might wipe it off so it works properly Take a look at it. It's just a transmitter. Just keep it on you at all times. If you lose it and you walk into here, the tank's not going to care. Your family might. Also, the tank's not. Also, the there is no residual digested food upon it. I wonder what you are looking at. You hear Zaz kind of give one of those dinosaur from a <laughs> Jurassic Park that little thing. <laughs> I can't make it, but that little high-pitched chuckling as he tosses his. So, uh, I'm if I understand correctly, you're all exiting the tank. Yes. Okay. Uh, Everyone is an EVA suit, correct? Mm-hmm. Except for the captain. <laughs> okay. And in case it becomes a thing, uh, your resistance while in an EV suit is a grand total of two. So that might become important. It might not. But uh, my question is, how are you proceeding out into the Ophion A? Are you going to do sort of breaches and clears? Are you just going to proceed cautiously? Or are you going to throw caution to the wind and just stride on in? But before we get out of the ship, Zaz sees the captain's not in an EVA suit. and says, sir, are you sure? Yes. I'll be fine. Oh, yeah, you didn't. 
we're you weren't privy to this. And as I say that, I'm going to shift into a liquid form, uh, just you know, humanoid in shape. Uh, but it's the mostly black with the gold ribbon swirling around. And he's and gonna... changeling. And Zaz takes a step back, looking, starts to reach for his blaster, his disruptor, but it doesn't see anybody else react as such. He'll shift back into the. I'm a changeling. It's a long story. It's fine. I will take you at your word so far has been true to me, so. If you would like to inquire at the Cornet Imperium military, they will confirm my identity. Uh, I will follow you now, sir. And he still is being wary. Just the, it's still just the shock of seeing it happen. So out of curiosity, what is your marching order? Well, uh, unless uh, Kraga says anyways, Captain first. Okay. Uh, I'd, I actually would rather go first because I have really high hand-to-hand just in case someone gets close to me. And I am the chief security officer. Okay, so right. you're up first. Then the captain. <laughs> and the captain. Cross, cross third you're gonna be f- or in the back. Oh, he's telling her she's going to be third. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, and because a lot of things are want... like jumping at us from behind. And is Zaz going with, or is he staying behind to repair? Zaz, you'll come with us or just to, until we can secure the area. Will do, sir. All right, so Kragath, you mark up on the side of the door. And... Uh, I signal for breach and clear position. I follow suit. So you you do that countdown with your fingers where you go three, two, one, and then on one and then go, you stride through the door. Kragath, immediately you see something flying at your face. You don't know what it is, but something is flying at your face. You may either shoot it or you may attempt to bat it out of the way. Or you could attempt Uh, to dodge, whichever, whichever one of those three you would like. But you do, my have, do not have time to, to identify it, unfortunately. My immediate response is to literally just haymaker it. Okay. Roll me a daring and security, please. Uh, difficulty of one. This is a opposed roll. Uh, you need at least uh, two successes here. Which you do. So, Kragith, uh go ahead and roll me some challenge die. How many? Uh, whatever your unarmed is. Uh, my unarmed is six, and I have piercing one on there. Okay. So, uh, the thing flying at your face, you realize as your fist is already in motion, it is literally a white fluffy cat, and you <laughs> punch it out of the air, and it goes, oh my God. and hits the wall <laughs> opposite, and sort of lets, sort of slumps down to the ground and just lies there motionless. Congrats. It is go. not dead. Do not worry. It is not dead. But you, you did just punch a cat. Good job. Oh. <laughs> the thing is, okay. I do not feel bad about this. Do well, I feel bad about it as a cat person? I do not feel bad about this because it jumped at me. It just wanted love, okay? You do not, <laughs> you do not jump at Master of Arms. Nobody, okay. If nobody wants that. If nobody wants to, I tell Sadie. You're not eating drink. the cat. Let's <laughs> let's take a look at it. Koros, please tell me it's okay. Koros, if gonna... you want to give me a reason medicine difficulty of one. <laughs> All right. um, I'm going to just poke the tank just to have it start broadcasting a message on audio speakers. Mm-hmm. Um, entry into this cargo bay will be met with uh, hostilities. Uh, you know, like like warning, this cargo bay is on lockdown. Entering will, you'll be shot. <laughs> okay. Um, and I guess I'm gonna tweak it just enough so that any animals run away from it. Like it's like a high pitch frequency playing in the background. Okay. Don't so... need a cat being vaporized. <laughs> so uh, so I... with uh, one success, what you learn is that the cat is fine. Like it probably is just stunned. 
Um, but you are noticing that its genome, its DNA, does not match that of any known cat on record. Oh. God, it's a retrograde virus. Uh. We have a containment unit on the shuttle. Uh, I would say you would, but it probably is only going to be able to hold the cat. Good look enough. at these cargo containers. I'm like, mm, time to pull a Naris. <laughs> Anything <laughs> bigger we could put on the, on the front bumpers of the hover tank. Oh. Just do we expect the cat to, to the be able to tank? Nice. Uh, I do want to mention, considering our driving skill with that tank, do you think those front things will survive? Uh, it would be increased weight. Okay. Enough talking about this cat. We're just going to put it in this cargo container here. I'm just going to find like a medium-sized one, pop the cat in, and close the lid. Wow. <laughs> Breathing okay. holes? It should have I... enough air. Wow. It's, it's a... The plant container, so it should be okay. It says it can hold five plants in a body. That is a weird specification on this container. <laughs> you hear like the hmm. faint sounds of scratching on the interior. I, I am going to proceed further into the ship. Okay. With a I'm... phaser drawn and noticing I'm using one of the newer ones, so it's just a uh, non-lethal. Okay. I am moving that container in front of the ramp, just not inside the ship, but in front of it. So when we come back, it's a reminder not to forget it. Okay. If we want to take it. Good, because I was totally going to wait for you guys to like leave the Ophion and the cat's still in the container. And I'd be like, so, guess what you forgot? <laughs> We're going back down, folks. All right. So uh, with the cat out of the way, you do sort of enter into the Ophion A's corridors. And again, like the outside, the corridors are immaculate. There are no debris. There are no bodies. There's no smell or whatever smell there would be standard to a Federation vessel. Um, but what you're noticing is that the lighting is currently set to be red alert. Uh, computer. There is a chime that says the computer is acknowledging. Cancel red alert. Please provide access code. Is there a way for me to dig up the access code or there is potential? Indeed. Uh, this will be a fairly difficult task, but it is possible, yes. The other thing I want to try and do too is, as my time as, uh, I can't remember his name, uh, but when I impersonate him, mm -hmm. uh, Captain Wolfdog, his character. Some yes, Sengral, thank you. Would I have snagged uh, during the little hack we were trying to do his uh, command codes? If you give me two threat, yes. Yes, I'll give you two threat. Okay. So what that's going to do is that gonna, that's going to bring the difficulty down from a 5 to a 4. Uh, but what this is going to be, and this is going to be Karas leading because she is Starfleet and would have insight. She also has a computer's focus. This is going to be a, well... Not good focus, well, not good attribute wise, but this is a daring security. Mm. And the difficulty is a four. Now, before you roll, uh, remember you do have determination, which you can spend to get the auto success before you roll. And you can also give me threat for additional dice. To help her with this, mm -hmm. I'm going to turn into Captain Singral. Okay. <laughs> so now, Chorus, you're looking at Captain Singral. <laughs> Zazzler takes another step back. This is... <laughs> She's going to blink and shake her head and nod and say yes. Leave this out of the report. I told him I wouldn't wear his face again, but circumstances... This is a good reason to. Shh. So you're saying I should leave this off the report, sir? That I'm looking like him, yes. <laughs> okay. All right. And what I will do is I will allow one person to assist on this, which I'm thinking is going to be the captain. Captain, you're going to do a uh, presence command here. 
Now, uh, Kuras, again, uh, are you spending determination and or buying additional dice with threat? What do y'all think? Remember, it is a uh, difficulty of four. I'm perfectly fine with it. All right. I, I like chaos, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, spending the momentum? Well, it would be how many additional dice do you want? I'd say go for the whole beans. So that's that would what, be six? six threat. Yeah. But we're no well, longer in a tank where we have less health than our characters do, so we're good. Okay. So go ahead and do the whole beans. E. I, that's what my, I, I suggest that. Okay. And how how many dice would that give us? Five d twenty. Five d twenty. Whoo. All right. Cross my fingers. <laughs> oh my <Yeah>. god! <laughs> wow! So, wait, did you do this with, uh... What did you do this with? Ah, uh, everything. So, do you, do you, you want to pop determination to reroll? With focus. Yeah. Wait, with focus, uh, were you using... Well, security of one, so her focus wouldn't have mattered because she would have to roll a one. But, uh, uh, so Cross, stuff. you can spend your determination here if you can tell me a value that applies, and you could re-roll those four zeros, including the complication. Every problem has a solution. <laughs> sure. I'll roll my, uh, assist. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... We are just rolling in the crits tonight. Mm-hmm. What, what do I do after I use a determination? Uh, you would just go ahead and re-roll those four zeros. So you would roll four d20 as if you were doing a, a completely new daring security. Good news is with the captain's success, you only really need to see two successes now. And the other good news is that the complication... <laughs> okay, so Did good I get news. it? No! Good news, the Can complication it? is gone. Bad news, when you try to access the computer even with Singral providing well pseudo Singral providing his access codes the uh, computer does that negative beep and says error command codes not recognized please contact security at your earliest convenience may I attempt something what would you like to attempt I attempt the oldest and most effective fix that we know percussive maintenance I'm going to slap the side of the computer He's just slapping the wall. <laughs> Craig, yes, roll I me literally a, hit the uh, hit. Roll me unarmed damage, please. So, so not even a daring security roll. No, just unarmed damage. Because I think you can hit a wall. Hmm. So <laughs> I hit that wall really hard. You hit that wall so hard that you puncture through to the EPS conduit, and immediately a uh, red alert. Uh, begins flashing again, and this time the computer says, Alert! Hostiles detected near Cargo Bay Alpha, sending security forces immediately. Uh, I reach in there, and I try to grab a few wires. You're, you're more able to do so. And I try to rip out a couple of wires. You rip out a tussle of wires. The and lights turn off. <laughs> yeah, like the the lights in your immediate area turn off. I pull out a few more to see if I can like disable something. Yeah, the more you tear out, the the more things get dark, but it doesn't help you because uh all of you are now hearing the sound of something coming towards you. It's like an unholy mix between a zombie uh and a tiger roar. So oh. maybe like a zombie tiger. There we go. Yeah, something like that. But uh, you're also hearing the sound of heavy footfalls coming in your direction. I, I turn on my headlights. I think you. I think Evo suits have those, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and I look in the direction of where the thumps are coming from. Phase mm -hmm. are up. Oh great! Um, <laughs> so the girls is gonna do that Henry Cavill move in uh, Mission Impossible, where you know he reloads his guns, but instead. My right arm turns into a long blade, and my left arm turns into uh, a bludgeoning object, a hammerhead end, pretty much. Okay. 
So I wasn't sure we'd get to this point, so I actually don't have a token for the creature. But if you will imagine a literal uh, sort of tiger with uh, some spikes sticking out of it. And uh, interestingly, even though the token that I've thrown on the map here doesn't show, it is the same fur color as the cat that jumped you earlier. But we are going to go into combat here. Wait, I want to have a fist fight with a tiger. Let me have this. Let no, me have Bernie. This. No, Bernie, you can't fight a tiger. <laughs> Let me have this. All right, well, it is the player's turn to act first, so who wants to go first? How close is it? Uh, I would say it is about uh, medium range away from you, so it is within movement distance if you wanted to fist a cuff set. Yes. Kragos, stun it. Not, not punch it? Oh. No. Uh, how much momentum do we have? Nothing. None. <laughs> Can we use all of it? Okay. Give me threat, though. It... No, no, I can't give you threat for uh, fire at will. For fire at will. Mm. It only I can burn two momentum to get an extra shot. So I'm firing. I mean, honestly, I, you, usually, unless it's it's very specific, like cautious, um, you can give me threat for that momentum cost. I also get to decide if I want to take the second shot after I make the first. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that's a control security for you. Difficulty of two. Which you succeed. Bang. Go ahead and roll me some damage. Eight challenge dice. I think you'll get it. Yeah, and uh, with eight challenge die, uh, you've rolled six successes. So, Kragith, when you shoot the uh, tiger thing, uh, two things happen. The first is that it sort of comes to a tumbling stop before you. Uh, the second thing is that the red alert ceases for some reason. Oh. Captain, I think cats have control of the ship. Well, I do believe the felines of Earth are superior to the humans. That's a joke. Okay. Cora? <laughs> I actually gave him a sidelong glance of, what? <laughs> <laughs> Koros, do a yes. good job scanning this thing. I have a suspicion. Yes, sir. Man, Koros, give me another reason medicine. Difficulty of one. Does xenobiology come oh, yeah. into play here? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, you get two momentum. Yay! Karas, uh, yeah, you're seeing the same sort of discrepancy in the genome, but this time uh, you notice something additional with that many successes. You notice that there is Vulcan DNA mixed in here. Who? <laughs> what is it? Exactly. <laughs> uh, that is a weird... Gene splicing thing. Um, so these cats have Vulcan DNA in them. Is uh, is it something that is already known, like a medical specific term for it? Uh, if you give me a momentum, I think I can answer the question you're curious about. Are y'all all right with that? Actually, wait. You're the science officer. You get a free yeah. question. Yeah. Yes. So uh, your question is, just so I'm clear, is this a known splicing? Right, correct. Okay. So what I would say is that no, it is not a known splicing. But if you compare your earlier scan of the cat that you punched, you see that there's human DNA in the old cat. Whereas in the new cat, it's Vulcan. Could it be that there is a viral infection that turns creatures into cat-based life forms? That's rather preposterous. But, you know, under the circumstances, anything's possible here. Dominus is going to sneeze, and he's just going to um, get a little furry. Like Cation style? Hey, yeah. Uh, mutton chops of uh, fur pops up. 
Captain, I would ask you to refrain from making jokes like that. Oh, you saw if through you, that. If you have the sniffles, an EVA suit to keep out contagions. It, I should be okay. A lot of viruses like this will have a hard time trying to identify what to change, and anything does start changing, I can just shift it to another form, and the virus will be like, why? I'm spending two, two, mo two threat, because when you try to get rid of the fur that you jokingly put on, it doesn't go away. <laughs> Interesting. Is yeah. there a way to get a sample? Do you want a sample of the tiger or the captain? Oh. Wait, Kragath knuckles for the cat. I, I actually thought of something. Go for it. Chorus, could you take a blood sample from the tiger and the cat and attempt to find a similar, a similar viral infection? I can do my best. Do. Do. <laughs> <laughs> Sir! <laughs> so, uh, Cross, this is going to be a, let's call this a control and a medicine. Uh, difficulty of three, so you might want to spend a momentum or two. Uh, it's medicine what? Uh, medicine and control. Can I actually help out? Uh, if you tell me how. Uh, basically what I am doing is I'm also applying my understanding of, of a medicine because I have been trained in combat medicine. Mm hmm To try to find any sort of infection. Okay. Yeah, I'll allow you to assist. All right. Control. Are we using any momentum? Uh, you can, if you want. Okay. And I get to apply focus because combat mech. Well, combat medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, how many momentum would you like? I guess for three dice versus uh, two at wait. the very least. Or... So then we would be using two and then one threat. Oh. Well, uh, no, this no, no, is no. one it's, dice it's, because I already got a success. Yeah, it's oh, one okay. momentum for the third die, which is, I think, okay. what she meant. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. So get the, get the third die. Uh huh. Yep. So you're rolling yeah, three d twenty. Third die and fire. And Recommend yes. not rolling a twenty. <laughs> and yes, Rosino by all. Yep. Yes, Rosino. Hey. Very nice. So that is a total of four successes, which means you get a momentum right back. And, uh, yes, actually, there is a spore of sorts in the air. And now that you're looking at the readings, the spore is actually of the same sort of energy signature that is in the lights you scanned outside. Fungal infection. Give me a moment, and the captain's going to turn into a fog state for a brief second, and then he'll just revert back. Okay. Yeah. Are you reverting back out. to Dominus or Singral? Uh, Dominus. Okay. So uh, when you revert back to Dominus, you still have those furry cheeks. And in fact, when he was in fog form, it's actually rather comical. There's like a patch of fur that is literally floating midair. <laughs> hmm. Captain, I would suggest removing those infected pieces. Um, I guess. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to separate them from you. I'm going to, like, move whatever infected there and just, like, deposit it off to the side. Okay. Uh, roll me a, uh, let's call this a daring and a command? Now let's make this medicine. A daring medicine, a difficulty of two. Two. Uh. I have no focus for this. Actually, I, I would give you fitness medicine as well. So whichever is better, either your daring or your fitness. Uh, they're both the same. Okay. Yeah. No focus. No so uh, good news, no complications, but you try to separate, and it's the damnedest thing. Like, your own body is not responding the way it should. As in, it's Captain. not able to separate out, like, contagions or things of that nature. Captain, I believe you should have been wearing an Evo suit. I'll be fine. It's hard for Gorn to whistle, but 
<laughs> He's doing his damnedest. Yeah, let's try to find a way to attack the membranes of the morphogenic matrix. I could turn into a rock, and hopefully that'll kill it. Would you like Bore to us. turn into a rock? <laughs> it's a rock with little furry sides. I'm going to laugh. Because <laughs> <Moss. laughs> um, you know what? Can you send your? Can you I'm send gonna... your? Mm, sorry. I'm going to turn into a silicon-based life form. Okay. I need you to roll me a fitness and medicine, please. Difficulty of four. Is this to change? Because I can give you actually a momentum for it. Uh, yes, this is to change. Okay. Uh, so for the change, like, it's just a momentum. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I thought you meant like as like a die thing. No, no, no. This is This is something related to the change. Oh, okay. Uh, so what do I control? A fitness and a medicine at a difficulty of four. And let me check your focuses real fast. Uh, you unfortunately would not have a focus. All right. Uh, I'm giving you the beans for uh, five dice. Okay. Noted. And... Yeah. Jesus. Do you want to keep that result? Uh, I'll pop a determination. Determination is duty before all else. I can't afford to be sick. Okay. Me re -roll or those learn to yeah. or learn to adapt or left to be perish or left to perish. So one of those two. Uh, fitness medicine. So for three wow. successes. I am not rolling well. So Dominus, when you try to shift into maybe like a silver blood, because that's, I always imagine it like it's, it's, it's morphogenic adjacent, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, what happens is when you uh, shift into a silvery kind of color, uh, all of you watch as two tuft ears begin rising out of his head. No, Captain, I'm not I turning the captain you're... into a furry, but this is kind of what's happening. Captain, I believe morphing yourself exacerbates your condition. <sighs> I think I'm showing it how to infect people quicker. <laughs> Should I send these samples off to the... Is it possible to send the samples off to the um, Dark Royal? It is. Can we go ahead and do that so uh, we can figure out how to cure this infection virus? Go ahead. We should actually head to the sick bay too. Federation sick bays are years ahead of Cornets. Roger that. So, Karos, uh, you being Starfleet, you know more or less where sick bay would be on a vessel of this size and this make. And uh, normally I would have a map for this, but I just like this image of the Ophion A too much. So we're just going to leave it there. Um, but you do end up in Sick Bay, and Sick Bay is illuminated once you step into it. And uh, interestingly, uh, when you step in, the emergency medical hologram activates. Uh, it is not Andy Dick, it is actually Rich, uh, Ricard or Ricardo? No, Ricardo's Picardo. Uh, Picardo, that's what it is. Basically, it's the doctor from Voyager. That's what I'm trying to get at here. Yeah. Uh, and he does says, the hologram have facial hair? Uh, no, does he it does head? not. Uh, but uh, the doctor says, please state the nature of the medical emergency. Uh, let's see. Our captain, ha is, there's an infection that seems to be running throughout. Uh, what? He's growing fur? <laughs> And the uh, EMH immediately takes its tricorder out and begins scanning the captain. Most curious, you appear to be a changeling. Are you aware of this? Oh, that's wonderful. Apparently I can't maintain a cornet form accurately. Your sensor should have read me as cornet. I'm sorry, I yes. don't know what those are. We're a new species. Captain... 
If you want to give me an insight command, difficulty of one. Uh, persuasion? Not persuasion. Negotiation, perception, diplomacy? Perception. Remember how you asked about Ember and her previous assignments? The MH yep. just said he doesn't know what a cornet is. Just kind of nodded him. He was like, yep, we're um, new species to the Federation. You've been stuck down here for a few years. I see, I see. And uh, are you here to rescue us? Hopefully. That's the goal. Well, as far as I can tell, your morphogenics matrix is becoming unstable. I would suggest returning to the Great Link. I hear that works. Need something more temporary right now. I can give you something of a sedative. It would slow down your morphing ability, but it would also, well, that's why I call it a sedative. You would also be somewhat uh, dull, as it were. And Kuros, uh, I would like you to roll me an insight and medicine, please. All right. Difficulty of one. Does Xenobio count? Yeah, Xenobio would definitely count. Yeah, seems Oof. on the up and up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I rolled. Thank you, Doctor. If the condition gets worse, I will come back and seek your treatment. Uh, perhaps I wasn't clear. If you do not uh, receive at least some form of treatment, you will... Uh, I don't know what it is you changelings do. Do you just become a puddle? I do not believe that the captain would become a puddle. No, I'm beyond that limitation. Also the fact that what he is turning into is a solid object. The crew on the ship, yeah. do you have any information or any existing information about And uh, the hologram side kind of cocks to the head a little bit and says, I'm not able to access anything outside of sickbay. It seems someone has activated quarantine procedures. Understandable, considering what's going on with the ship. Tell me, Doctor, should you not have the ability to disable quarantine, considering we're on a class Y planet? There is no chance for infection. I am unable to override quarantine. Most curious. Hmm. Very well. Thank you. We'll head to the bridge. You turn away from him. And, Dominus, I need you to roll me a daring and a security, please. And this is hand-to-hand -hand combat if you've got it. Oh, yes. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a momentum for an extra third dice. Mm -hmm. And I am going to use... Uh, you know what? The hammer fist. <laughs> Okay. That'll be the thing I'll, I'll switch to if uh, if it comes to blows. Okay. Yeah. Three successes. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, so here's what happens, Dominus. You turn, and all too late, you realize that the doctor has pulled out a hypospray and is about to touch you. And you maybe slap it out of his hands, but it's too late. The hypospray has been injected into you. And uh, all of you watch in horror as the captain begins to shift and change. And captain, you're able to retain your, your uh, faculties, but when the shifting is done, you're no longer Dominus. You are something that you're going to laugh at. You are none Ooh. other than <laughs> yeah. Admiral Haru. Vacation. I mean, you're not uh, actually Admiral Haru, but it was the best token I could find. Uh, I'm going to... Can I Can I tackle the man? You can certainly tackle the hologram, yes. And I have my disruptor drawn just as Korath go, goes in. Actually, 
Kragus. Uh, I'm going to falcon kick him. Okay. So you falcon kick him and you go right through the hologram. Uh, I'm just yeah. going to say Zaz. Like, Zaz, emitters. And I'm pointing out to the emitters. And I shoot at the emitters. Yeah. And I'm going to say, uh, let's actually make a roll of this because it could get you momentum. And yeah, sorry, that... Uh, Oh, because I succeeded. Yeah, you didn't get any. So this is going to be a control security a difficulty of two. I'd say use the momentum to get a third dice. And that I will. And I have hand energy weapons. Yeah, two successes. So yeah, uh, go ahead and roll me some damage. Hmm. That'll be six. Disruptor has Vicious? Yep. Disruptor yes, it does, does have Vicious, so that's going to be a total vicious of 8 one. damage. So yeah, he points out the emitters, you fire, you strike the emitters, and immediately the holographic doctor flickers and disappears. And at this point, the red alert on the ship returns. I hate holograms. <sighs> it seems that the hologram has been driven insane. Yeah... Apparently, that was the second clue after he injected me. First clue was he's never seen a cornet. The previous chief of security of this vessel is a cornet. How do Indeed. I... He's just, like, flexing his hands, like, come on, claws. And, yeah, I'm going to throw you a bone. Claws do come out. There we go. Are they cat claws? Oh, yeah. That the May first I time suggest... I've... Hmm? May I suggest we shoot every hol every emitter on the way to the bridge? I suggest we take it to computer core. Disable it. Do they have mobile emitters? That's I not would funny. assume so. <laughs> Cars, what's your knowledge on the Pro uh, Prometheus class vessels or this one prototype? Um. Uh what is my knowledge on them? You know that uh, standard on Prometheus class vessels are shipwide hollow emitters, and you also know that they are able to split into multiple ships, meaning they have three separate warp cores. You also know that the computer core is one of the most advanced in Starfleet because it has to coordinate the efforts of three ships essentially. And you also know that it does use bioneural gel packs, much like Voyager does. I've heard of those gel packs. All right. Are there, are there shields enabled right now? Can I go ahead and scan for their shields? Or check the computers for it? Yeah, I would say let's make it a roll just because I would like to give you guys some momentum. Uh, if you could do a control and a command, uh, difficulty of zero. And so I'm testing the computers, right? So it's... You get the focus, yep. Oh. <laughs> Are you serious? That should be the worst of it. Uh. <laughs> Why? Yikes. Why is tonight the night? So, so here's what's going to happen. You try to access the computer again. And not only do the sickbay doors seal shut and a force field spring up, oh, but man. gas begins venting out into sickbay. And that's just one complication. The second complication is that Hiev contacts the away team and says, uh, Hello, uh, away team, uh, we are detecting that one of those creatures is approaching your... Oh, no, oh, it's eating the tank. It is eating the tank. Did the tank not fire at it? Uh, you do uh, hear, I guess you would hear it. Yeah, you would hear the muffled sounds of thumping that would seem to indicate that the tank is firing. But uh, yeah, apparently something is bearing down on it. Oh. One of the, the tigers? Uh, no, sorry, I should have been more clear. One of the magma creatures. Oh. Inside the shuttle bay? It is coming inside the shuttle bay, yes. Holy cow, okay. Have... Yes, Captain. Wait, you sound a little bit uh, under the weather. Is everything all right? 
Yeah, I just got a. Um, I got something caught in the back of my throat. Hairball. He's a hairball. I'm sorry. Is this <laughs> joke? No. I I wish. I'll pull up the schematics of a Prometheus class vessel. Best what we have. Fire at its computer core, with the railgun, nonstop until you hear otherwise. Are you certain, sir? Yes, we're going to take out a computer core. Very good, sir. Targeting now. All right, so Remember? this is going to be a uh, rather important role for Hiev, if you weren't able to tell. Uh, this is a difficulty of five, uh, and I'll explain the reasoning behind it. Um, first off, firing the railgun is a difficulty of three. You are targeting a specific system that is a difficulty of four. The inaccurate quality on the railgun means <laughs> it goes up to difficulty of five. So you have a difficulty five task ahead of you. Now, you didn't spend her value, just to be clear. You did not spend her value earlier. But um, what you can do here is... Uh, no, I guess there's not really anyone on the ship who could assist her. So it's going to be Hev and the ship. Uh, she's rolling a control security. The ship is rolling a weapon security. And again, it is a difficulty of five. Uh, Kaldar could attempt to help. He does have security four. I would allow it, sure. I will allow uh, Kaldor to help out. And he was used during the crossover event, so this would be his first activation then. Which means you could upgrade him, yes. Yeah, I'm going to toss in a... Uh... An assist doesn't matter if I have determination, does it? No, you cannot use your determination or buy dice if you are assisting. And focuses, uh, talents don't apply either? Uh, talents are a special case, uh, but focuses definitely apply. Alright. Uh... <laughs> Railgun expert. <laughs> Gun expert, okay. Alright, so let's, ship. uh, let's have Koros roll this, because we're picking... Now, you know what? We've picked on her too much. Uh, no, Sunbae, why don't you, have... uh, why don't you roll for Hiev this time? I'm gonna come full for sheet. Uh, Kragath, can you roll for the ship? Uh, and I will roll for, uh... Go. So, weapons, security? Yep. And what's, uh, Kaldor assisting with again? Uh, control security. Control security. Alright, uh, I forgot to roll with... I forgot to roll with focus, but it didn't matter. Yeah, it didn't matter. So that's one success already. Um, and, and he has popping determination. So she only has two dice. Unless you uh, give I've... me threat or uh, pop your determination. Our, our determination would be two auto successes, right? Correct. So that she just only has the two dice. Correct. And if you want, you can give him a threat for her. Okay. Okay. Uh, hey, you've got so... five right now. That's that's good. Don't roll a complication. Yeah. Oof. Okay, so you actually get two oh, momentum yeah. from this. All right, and go ahead, momentum... and uh, whoever would like to do the honors, roll me railgun damage. Uh, I'll do the damage. Okay. Let's see, railgun seven. And it has piercing one. Uh, I'm going to give him a momentum for an extra additional piercing. Okay. Just in case. So that's a total of piercing 10 for 6 damage. So there is a shudder throughout the entire Ophion A as a uh, perfectly aimed railgun shot uh, pierces the main computer core. And almost immediately, uh, everything around you, the force field, the gas venting into sick bay, all of that just stops. And uh, what happens is Hev's reports and says, uh, Captain, are you still there? Did we kill you this time? Oh, uh, we're still here. Damn. Wait, sorry. That was not meant to be on comms. Sorry, his joke. Um, <laughs> we are reporting that the uh, ship is powering down, at least as far as we can tell up here. Um, good news is that the creature also stopped. Good, good. But uh, I also have bad news. Uh, are you somewhere I can uh, show you an image? Yeah, we're in sick bay. I'll enable one-way visual. And I'm only going to enable visual from her, and she's not going to see me. Okay. 
So what you see is an exterior shot from orbit. And you remember how I said there were lights orbiting the, uh, the Ophion? Those lights are now in hyperdrive around the impact site. And you can just barely make out that it's almost like nanobots or some sort of nanotechnology reassembling the hull. Okay. You have find out exactly what those life forms are and launch whatever probe you need to disrupt them. Uh, certainly, sir. We will get on it immediately. And it is at this point, I need everyone, except for the captain, to roll me a fitness medicine, please. And the difficulty on this is just a one. So I have the traits of vacation right now. What book are they in? Uh, they are in Alpha. Alpha. Where are you? All right. Karas gets a momentum. Yeah. Sazadar is fine. And if the trend continues, Kragith will fail this one. Oh no. More of his lunch. Uh, this tail gets fuzzy. <laughs> I believe Come in you, on. Soup. I believe. I believe in you, Soup. My, my brain just shorted out for a second as I thought about vomiting my lunch out again. <laughs> um, what was the roll again? Fitness medicine. Fitness medicine. Fitness. Okay, a good roll. You I have a good that. chance of this. You say that. You, yeah. Uh, 1d20, 2d20. 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 Can I use combat medicine for this or no? No, unfortunately not. <laughs> See, you're fine. You Ooh, to... Wow. You so... say that, and Kragith has already vomited everything in his stomach. Well, no, the good news is that this was not related to uh, your stomach. So you're at four momentum. And yeah, all of you feel fine. No adverse. Well, I mean, Dominus, you're a cat, but what are you going to do? Hmm, I don't like the fact that that little bugger did that to me. All right. As long as I'm staying in humanoid form. Yeah, I mean, you um, are, for all intents and purposes, you're basically a Cation. I heard about reports of a changeling being locked into a form. Great. I might have to see that Vorta after all. Okay. We're going to go to the computer core and delete the holographic programs. If it's repairing like the outside hull is, we don't have much time. So, yeah, so, I'm going to go to the door and try and pry it open. Yeah, you're more than easily able to get it open again. Um, but this is sort of where I'm going to take a temperature check. So we have about another hour and a half hour uh, left in this adventure. Um, but we do have to cut off in about 23-ish minutes. Um, so would you guys be okay with this being a two-parter? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Sure. Okay. I'm good. Not dead yet. All right. Then this is where we will end session four on a little bit of a cliffhanger. So, yeah. Uh, thank you guys so much for playing. Uh, anyone on stream, hopefully you had a good time watching. Uh, but this is where I'm going to terminate the stream. So, Twitch, YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. And see you later. Bye, stream. Meow, meow.